Hi everyone, this is Greg from BrothersInsanity.com bringing you our breakdown of the Metal Gear Rising Revengeance demo. As some of you may know, this game is actually being developed by Platinum Games and not internally by Kojima Studios. As far as the story goes, it seems like originally when Kojima was working on Metal Gear Rising, they'd actually hit a wall and they weren't able to do the game they wanted to do anymore. So they had actually scrapped the project and it was frozen and on hold, possibly even for a next gen release, but permanently on hold and then they were approached by Platinum Games and they actually offered to finish the game and Kojima's only request was that uh, they could get the game working at 60 frames a second. Now the biggest change besides the developer actually comes in the form of the story. Originally Kojima had stated that this game was going to take place between Metal Gear Solid 2 and Metal Gear Solid 4. We we're going to get to see Raiden and see his transformation to the cybernetic ninja and kind of see his growth as a character as we would see him in Metal Gear Solid 4. Now the way the story goes is it takes place four years after Metal Gear Solid 4. Now this is just a theory, but my thought on that is that Kojima didn't want the official canon messed with if the game turned out to not be as successful as he wanted it to be. And by pushing the story back beyond Metal Gear Solid 4, it doesn't really mess with his timeline and the events of the games that he's already finished. My first and most obvious conclusion about the demo is that this is a Platinum Games made game. Now obviously, since I just told you it was made by Platinum, that makes a lot of sense, right? But really, truthfully, it feels like a Platinum Games made game. So it feels like Vanquish, it feels like Bayonetta, as far as the controls go. A main thing, as far as cutscenes go, the way the camera angles are, and even as far as the music especially, doesn't set that same sort of tone that you're used to seeing from a Hideo Kojima game. You begin the demo with a pretty basic tutorial, um, basically going over the controls. Now the basic controls are going to have L1 putting you into the cut mode, R1 is your run mode, X is jump, you move with the left analog stick, and you move the camera with the right analog stick, or I should say you try to move the camera. It's incredibly touchy, especially when you're close to a wall. It makes navigating the camera to look around you virtually impossible. Other than that, I happen to actually really like the controls. Everything seems to work really well. And clearly it's not a stealth game, and they certainly don't even try to be. Um, it is an action game. My only real complaint with the controls is that there's a lack of a dodge or a roll button. An action game like this, especially something as similar as this is to say Devil May Cry, and Bayonetta and things like that, you really need to have that quick roll, that quick dodge, or at least just a block button, and this game doesn't have anything like that. The closest it comes is there is a parry, which you hold the analog stick and then hit the attack button, the light attack button square. What bothers me about that is that that's how you would attack someone. So sometimes when you're attempting to parry or block an attack, you're actually caught in the middle of an attack. Now the game is very generous and forgiving when it comes to that, but that also makes you feel like more button mashing than really timing a well perfectly placed parry. Now earlier I'd actually said that this game is not a stealth game and doesn't try to be, and that wasn't 100% accurate. They actually do have a sort of stealth element and there is a detection system in place. Um, it's not very accurate as you can pretty much sprint right in someone's field of view, run up right behind him and instant kill him. But I like any game that does allow you to do instant kills, especially from a stealth position. Uh, and not only the basic enemies, but you can even do it to the larger geckos as well. Scattered throughout the level you will also find secondary weapons. Um, in this demo you find grenades and you also find a rocket launcher. While useful, to me it seems kind of tacked on, it doesn't seem like anything I want to use. The weapons are clunky, you have to go into a pause menu to select them and it doesn't it just kind of takes you right out of the action one thing i'm incredibly impressed with was their ability to get the cut anything theory into this game i think when kojima originally conceptualized this he really wanted to have what we saw in that demo the cutting the watermelon slices and to cut anything at any angle and i think that's what led to him not being able to finish the project was he ran into some frustrations with it and obviously he couldn't make it work at the speed and the fluidity that he wanted out of the 60 frames a second so I'm actually very impressed with what Platinum was able to do here, and they give you a very good sense of being able to cut anything. Uh, you're still able to cut pillars. Unfortunately, as you see here, there are certain things you just cannot interact with and cannot cut. But I think overall they did a pretty good job making you feel like you can interact with anything in the environment. However, with that being said, one slight issue I do have is when you get into a, a battle, 
it actually ropes off a certain area of the level. So you are contained with a certain area until that fight is finished. Obviously that was another thing done, I'm sure was a resource limitation, and they could only do so much with the engine they had. But it feels a little tacky to me. And at the end of every fight, you get your scorecard, and almost makes it feel like it's stage-based. And again, just anything that pulls away from the feeling of Metal Gear is definitely a turnoff for me in this game. Now, going back to the story, I'm incredibly disappointed that they moved the story to four years after the events of Metal Gear Solid 4. I was really, really looking forward to filling in that gap between the second and fourth Metal Gear Solid. There's some really iconic moments there, like Raiden meeting Big Mama, Raiden rescuing Sunny, even Raiden rescuing the corpse of Big Boss. I do feel like Kojima left those holes in there on purpose so he could fill it with a story later, and unfortunately we're not going to get to see that story in this game anyway. All in all, this demo is exactly what I expected. It's certainly not a Metal Gear Solid game, but if they were going to have someone besides Kojima Studios make a Metal Gear game that was going to be more action oriented, I wouldn't trust anyone else more than I would trust Platinum Games to do that. And they seem to have done a really good job here. The controls are very f smooth and fluid, the game is very fun, the graphics are really good, the character models are awesome, and hopefully the story lives up to the hype. Thank you very, very much for watching, and as always, if you could follow us on Twitter at Bros Insanity, you can always subscribe to our channel and like us on Facebook, and of course, you can always hit us up on brothersinsanity.com.